It has been 50 years since President Lyndon Johnson declared war on poverty. Senator Mar Marco Rubio is continuing uh, that battle on Capitol Hill. At least we're talking about it again. Joining us now, uh, Florida Senator uh, Marco Rubio. Um, Good morning. It, it's such a, it, it's not just poverty, uh, Senator, but, you know, we want a, a more vibrant middle class and, and right. we talk about uh, income distribution. And it's really a paradoxical discussion that, that we have again and again. And, and Republicans ought to have a, a much better story than they've had in the past, especially with what has happened to people in need over the past five years. Because the people that the president so wanted to help, if you look at any metric, food stamps, disability, participation in the workforce, you look at any of those things, you would say they're headed in the wrong direction. And, and simply widening the safety net to a much greater number of people is not what any of us wanted in this country. And yet you, the Republicans, seem to have a hard time um, getting that message out. Well, again, we, we hope now. We hope that will change. And here's the, the problem, as, as I see it. The, the problem is not simply the income inequality that the president is focused on. The problem is opportunity inequality. And the example I always use is, you know, of course the, the cashier at a fast food restaurant makes less than the CEO of the company. That's not the issue. The issue is whether that person is working a cashier or not working at all gets stuck there forever or for a long period of time without the ability to move up. And, and the truth be told, the statistics say that for most Americans there has been mobility. But there are a group of Americans, a significant number of Americans, for which there is not that sort of mobility. We have to address the structural causes of that lack of opportunity. And they are yeah. social, they are educational, they are economic. Uh, and, 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 we've got, and the problem with our current safety net programs is that they help alleviate some of the pain of poverty but they do absolutely nothing to help people emerge from that poverty. Right. And that's what I think we should be focused well, on, is helping so people get to, out to of To succeed, it. Senator, we need, the pro we need people to succeed by, by having an opportunity to work in the private sector and to, and to earn their success and to, and right. to do well. But, but so to the, do that. But the but government, do... anything that we get the government to do to try to make it easier to succeed in the private sector, a lot of times it's counterproductive. And, and well, can't, we need to find ways yeah. that the government can, can be, be productive, not counterproductive, and whether it's education, whether it's immigration, whatever you, you need to look at, a lot of times the government is so ineffective at doing anything that we waste money trying to help the people, but no one connects the dots, and we end well, up in a worse position than we were. In order to help people have more mobility, you need to do two things. First, you have to have a vibrant private market that's creating these better jobs. Right. And number two, you have to have people with the skills and the capabilities to do those new jobs, particularly in the modern economy where the higher paying jobs all require a higher level of education than ever before. And there's where the gap exists. We do not have ways or we are not accurately or effectively delivering to people the skills that they need for the middle class jobs of the 21st century. So for example, this is one thing I want to focus on. If you're a 30 year old single mother working full time and raising your kids, you can't just drop everything and go to a university for four years. We've got to figure out a way to allow her to access skills while she works full time and raises her family because that's the only way she's going to triple her pay. And, and those are the things that I want us to focus on. That is where government can be effective, but we can't forget the first part of it. And that is policies on regulation, on the national debt, and on taxation that also create and foster a vibrant private market that's creating these better paying jobs. Right, because we know now that this is going to be a, an issue that, 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 that the opposing party of yours wants to run on at this point. So the Republicans, you know, better get a, a, a decent plan together instead of just, <clears throat> you know, that they cut taxes, help corporations, and that will eventually trickle down and, and you know, uh, the middle. And, well, that's and, not free enterprise. You what you've just described is not free enterprise. What you've described is corporatism. I don't believe in corporatism. I believe in free enterprise, where any, if you, someone has a better idea, they can well, quit their job and put their boss out of business right. by opening a better but You company. need to tell that story, because people associate Republicans with corporatism, unfortunately, at this point. And, and uh, well, yeah, it, it makes, you know, and, but in the back of everyone's mind, you know that private sector jobs are what generates taxes to fund the government to allow us to help everyone. So, you know, there's a chicken and egg thing, but sooner or later you, you just can't escape it. But that, I'm trying to understand, okay. I'm well, that's not on the back of my mind, that's on the front of my mind. <laughs> of, of course you have to have a private sector job well, creation. Well, the, the last and that's couple the first elections part of the didn't, didn't go too well for a party that should have been able to explain that a lot better, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, in 2010, Republicans took a majority in the House based on right. a rejection of big government. Uh, obviously, the 2012 presidential elections didn't go well, but I assure you, that Democrat, there are plenty right. of defenders Senator, of corporatism in the Democratic Party. Senator, here's the question, though. 
uh, most of the new jobs that are being created, not most, but a large percentage, are low, lower wage jobs. It's just, it's the reality of, of, of where we live today. And unfortunately, these jobs are not stepping stone jobs. The job that uh, people said, you know, you go to work at McDonald's and that's, that's where you start and then you go somewhere else, or you go to work at Walmart and that's where you start and you go. Somewhere. But that's no longer the case. Um, right, but uh, what that's I'm trying the fundamental to understand problem. Is, it is the fundamental problem, but I'm trying to understand what you actually do about that in a meaningful way that, I mean, education is one thing, and I, I, I wouldn't dissuade you. That's a, it's, a, it's a great way to go, but it's a, it's a 20 to 30 year, uh, you're not, I don't think you're going to see the results of that for 20 or 30 years. I, I'm curious what you actually do right now. Well, first of all, I don't believe you'll see the results in 20 or 30 years. I think you'll see them immediately in, in terms of empowering people to be able to fill some of the jobs that are open. Uh, there is a skills gap in America. It needs to be filled. Beyond that, the jobs you're describing is accurate. Many of the middle income, lower skilled jobs that used to provide the backbone of the middle class have been outsourced or have been replaced by technology. The truth is, though, some of the higher paying jobs are not being created here through a combination of factors. Number one is a, is a lack of, an edu of, a, of a qualified workforce. Number two is we are, we are in many cases, uh, deporting or asking to leave some of our brightest scientists and potential job creators through our broken immigration system. Number three, I would say to you that we have a tax code and a regulatory code that is incentivizing right. investment and reinvestment of profits overseas instead of here in the United States. Right. We have got right. to change those You mentioned things. that third. Uh... I, 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 you know, that's what I mean. It, it, it used to be that would be first, and in, in the real world, that probably is, is a pretty good answer, that you need to make us more competitive, our companies more competitive in this country because it's a global economy right now. And the more we can do in terms of regulation and tax policy and territoriality and all of that, the more we can do sooner or later would probably help us get down the unemployment rate and help us generate those jobs. But you right. mentioned it third because you can't really say that anymore given the history of the last couple of no, elections. No, I mean, th listen, you have to do all three of them. That's my point. That's the yeah. problem we you have around here. You need the money to you do the first two. Well, you need to do both. You, that's what I'm, again, the point I'm trying to reiterate is you've got to do both. You've got to have a healthy, vibrant private market, but you also have well, to have don't. people with the we, skills and the capacity to fill those jobs. We don't have a government that's have trying to do, to do that right now, unfortunately. Anyway. Well, and that's correct, and that's what we're trying to change, hopefully. Right. Okay. Senator, the headlines this morning are covered with uh, stories about Governor Chris Christie, about what's happened in local politics, and the, the take on all of this is that he's a bully. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, I'm not going to comment on that story. I don't know anything about it other than what I've seen a couple headlines in the papers. It'll work its way through and, and ever, the, well, everyone will figure it out. But that's a New Jersey issue and we'll let them focus on that and they'll figure it out. Senator, but you say it's a New Jersey issue, but it's, it's a party. It becomes a party issue, no? No, I'm not going to comment on every story and every controversy in the country. I mean, like I said, there's a process underway there. The legislature's looking at it. Governor Christie's made a statement. This thing will work its way out. I'm not going to comment on something I know nothing about other than what I've heard in a couple of press reports. Where are we on, on immigration now? It's hard to, to keep track of everything with all the different players, and, and that is something that gets a lot of bipartisan um, support and attention in terms of being one of the, one of the missing uh, pieces to the puzzle for, for solving well, where we some are is, yeah. Where we are is the country has a big problem. I, this is not an environment that's conducive to solving it in one big piece of legislation as the Senate tried to do. The House has expressed a willingness to begin to deal with immigration in a, in a sequential, ordered way where they take individual issues on its own. And I think we should explore that route because to get anything done here requires both the House and Senate to agree on it. And so I think that's a, an appropriate approach given what they're willing to do, and, and maybe that's what will happen here this yeah. year. How about just, uh, it, would you say that the Republican platform in, in 16, is it going to be, is it going to de-emphasize social issues that Republicans seem to be a little bit behind the curve on? Well, I think that misses the point. For example, one of the, the greatest eradicators of poverty, one of the greatest factors in poverty that we talked about earlier is marriage. When a kid is being raised in a married family, their likelihood of being in poverty drops dramatically. That's a social issue. Should we de-emphasize that, despite the dramatic impact it's having on our economy? Well, I don't think so. Same sex, they can be raised in a same-sex marriage just as successfully, right? Well, we, again, we don't know. We don't have any empirical evidence. That's a new dynamic that's emerging in the country. Uh, that's being solved at the state level. Some okay. states want it, some states don't. That's where it should be solved. All right. Senator, we appreciate uh, it's going to be something to watch. We get, you're going to pick up seats in the House? I don't know the answer to that, but I believe we'll have the majority in the Senate. All right. All right, Good. Senator. Thank you. All right.